This is Ken from Coffee Crafters, and we're going to do a video today and show you how to change a loft motor in an Artisan 2.5 or 3E. There are two different uh, styles of bodies, um, and so step number one is to take the screws out in this newer style body to get access to the floor panel. We're going to take four screws out of each side of the roaster, and I'm going to take the front ones out first and lay it down on the cart. That will allow us to tip the electrical floor down and access the stuff on the inside. So I'll take these front screws out first. And this job is much easier if you lay it on a table. Um, so that you have room to set it down and I'll show you the orientation that makes it easier. So I'm going to lay this down on the cart and you could do the same thing on a table and what we want to do is make sure that we have enough room to pull this down. That gives us our electrical panel down. The wires are still hooked to it. And we'll take the other ones out. This is much easier when you're doing this to take your power cord out because it's possible to do it by feeding the power cord back through, but it's just a lot faster to take the power cord out off of the power distribution block. All right. When we do that, we can tip the floor right down. The old body style did not have these tabs folded up. There were, if you put it down, Artisan 2.5, especially that one, and there will be eight screws around the bottom, and you would take yours out that way, it wouldn't have these ones around the side. So when we get inside, we see the, the loft motor sitting in there, and so we're just going to unplug that. So we're going to unplug the uh, motor leads first, and then we're going to unplug the heat element leads. So those are the two things that plug into the roaster. And then we're going to use our a socket. So what this takes, I'm, I'm going to use some power tools to make it faster, but um, this is an 11 30 second socket. And all we have to do to, can you get in here, Bryce, and look inside? All we have to do to remove this motor to get it to tip back is to remove these four 832 nuts around the side. The one down here in the corner you see has the ground wire on it. So we're going to take those out, set them aside. Okay, so the motor's loose. Got my four nuts I'm going to sit over here. Now inside, we still have the um, electrical hooked to the heat element. So we're going to tip this down really slowly so that we can see where those wires are hooked to the heat element inside. And we have to take those off. And one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to get, a, I'm going to get a, some pliers here. And I'm going to go in there and hold it down. So one, these have a little piggyback connector on them. So if, if, before you pull the wires off, take some time to look at those in there. We're just trying to pull the black off of the top of these. If you pull this wire off without holding it down, that is a little piggyback connector. Uh, I think, Bryce, I got some right here. We can, if we can get a close-up of these. So here's a little piggyback connector. This goes on the heat element lead, and then this is the little jumper uh, connector that goes from one element to the other, because there's actually two heat elements in there put together into one cartridge. And so right in the center of that V, I'm going to put the front of those needle nose pliers in there to hold that down, so when I pull the electrical leads off, the piggyback connector stays in place. There we go. So now the motor is removed. Um, when you get your new motor, uh, this is what it's going to look like right here. 
And the reason that we don't take the motor off the plate is we found over time that these things can um, jiggle around and get loose. So what we do when we assemble this cartridge, the plate and the top hat and the motor, we put a bead of silicone around the motor. So when we cinch these nuts down over the top of it, it makes them tight and they won't leak. So you won't lose air pressure. So the one part that we have to take off of your existing motor is we have to take the heat element uh, wire assembly out. And to do that, we just need a crescent wrench. We'll get in here and we'll back this off. Okay, let me get it from this side. There we go. So now we have the cord back in, and remember the orientation is for the spade connectors to be on the motor winding side. And when we put this back in, we want to make sure that we got the ground wire in the lower right hand corner. Um, that's where it was designed to go. So this is the part that you want to be really, really careful with. So we're going to go in here and make sure that our, the top spade on that piggyback is sticking out and we have to plug these motor wires into those too. So we're going to put it in here, tip the motor down. It does not matter which one of these leads goes to which terminal. So reach in there and plug those in. Make sure they slide all the way in. around here. All right, I felt them go in. And so when you get them plugged in, you want to go in there and make sure that all of these uh, wires are plugged in, the piggyback wire and the black motor leads, which those look good. So we'll put it back up there. There are four studs on the bottom that this fits over. We'll Put our nuts back on. Remember to put the ground wire back on in the lower right hand corner over the top of the stud before you put the nut on. All right. All right, we got that part done. So we're going to plug the motor leads back in. So there's a yellow and blue wire that come out of the motor control side. They go into the small black wires coming out for the motor. And again, it does not matter what orientation. You can put either lead on either black wire, and it works fine, a 220-volt device. And one of the things I do with these is I take my needle nose pliers, I grab them, behind the connector and, and plug them in that way. It makes them much easier to hold. The heat element wires plug back in. Those go on a little bit easier. All right, so the motor's in, everything is secure. When I feed this back up, you see where the wires getting get in here at close price, you see the wires go through the bottom. As I'm lifting that up, I'm gonna feed those in a little bit so that it's in the right spot. Get that up there, and now we can put the screws back in the bottom. So again, yours might be different. This is the newer design. It's got the screws around the side of the roasters, four on each side. The old design has two screws on each side of the bottom.
if you're going to put these in with a, a gun, you want to make sure to uh, don't go beyond 13 inch pounds of pressure. Um, these go into PEM hardware in the bottom that we press into the metal, and there's no reason to over, over tighten them. So extend the roaster back up. On this model, we extend the roaster back up, and we have four more screws across the bottom in the front. And that's it. So you put your cord back in, plug it in, and you would be good to go. Um, there's really nothing else to do other than to test it when you plug it in. And make sure when you plug it back in that you not only test the loft, but you also turn on the heat, make sure your heat's coming up to temperature. Because one of the things that we've seen happen in the past, people will change the loft motor, put it back together, and while they're putting it back together, one of the leads will come off on the heat element and it won't heat up. So if that happens, don't panic. It just you have to go back and repeat the process, get in there and make sure they're plugged in. And if you need any help with it, give us a call.